Hi guys, before I get into this video, I just want to um, show you some of William Blake's artwork that maybe inspired Thomas Harris to actually write this book in the first place. For you, for those of you who didn't know, I mean, I certainly didn't know who William Blake was, but he was a poet, painter, and printmaker. And he painted a series of pictures called The Great Red Dragon, and these paintings depict scenes from the Book of, from, from the book of Revelation in the Bible. The uh, first painting that I'm going to show you is called The Great Red Dragon and The Woman Clothed in the Sun. This one seems to be the one that um, is the painting that is in the book that I'm about to talk about. Then there is The Great Red Dragon and The Woman Clothed with the Sun. The Great Red Dragon and the Beast from the Sea. And, 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 the, and the number of the beast is 666. I just wanted to show you these paintings just so we can appreciate them together. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is David. If you are new here, hi, welcome. And if you have been watching my channel for a while now, welcome back. So the book that I will be reviewing today is Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This isn't the first novel that I have read by this author. I read his Silence of the Lambs novel, which I enjoyed immensely, and I was extremely excited to read this book as well because it's part of the Hannibal Lecter series, and I was so excited just to dive into this book and to meet Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter again and um, to um, absorb more of Thomas Harris's work. But um, unfortunately, I um, enjoy, and even though I did enjoy this book, I didn't enjoy it as much as Science of the Lambs. But I will go through this in more detail in my video. So a little information about the book itself. The um, novel was published on October of 1981. So perfect time to read the book. The same month that it was published. And um, the... Um, genre of this book is a um, psychological horror but it does have crime and thriller elements scattered throughout it. This um, is um, technically the first um, novel that Thomas Harris published in his Hannibal the Lecter series. The um, Science of the Lambs which I said I well, was the first book that I read is technically the second book and um, but that one was um, published on the 19th of May 1988. There was a uh, movie um, based on Red Dragon as well, which was uh, released on the um, 11th of, of the uh, 11th of October 2002, and it was directed by Brett Ratner. And as everyone knows, Anthony Hopkins plays Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter brilliantly. No other actor can play that role apart from Anthony Hopkins. He is so creepy, and um, the way he looks, and the way he acts and speaks in that role, and the way he dresses is so perfect that is perfect casting for Hannibal the Lecter I mean I mean I mean I mean for Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter and of course let me tell you about the author himself William Thomas Harris the third but he simply um, goes by Thomas Harris I have no idea why he um, chose to have that as his published name I don't know why I mean I don't know what was wrong with William Harris but um, Maybe his publisher thought that Thomas Harris instead of William Harris would have been a more stronger name on the book. You know, I don't know. I mean, if, I mean, if you know that reason, uh, let me know in the comments down below. It'd be really interesting to actually find out. Um, anyway, Thomas Harris it was is a um, American author, and he was born on the um, 22nd of September, 1940. So as I always say in all my videos, this is going to be a spoiler free video, I am not going to spoil anything about this story whatsoever. And um, also these are going to be my, my own personal thoughts and feelings regarding this novel. As I said, I have read The Science of the Lambs and I didn't enjoy Red Dragon as much as that novel, but I'll explain myself in more detail in my likes and dislikes section. But um, please remember that going, going, go going forward guys these are my own my, my, my own personal opinions regarding this novel so what's the story of red dragon all about it opens up by introducing us to our main character called william graham graham is or was a detective and it was implied in the book that something happened in his past career that um 
something something went bad. He done him some some mistakes, and he um, is no longer a lead detective. He's more of a side detective, like a special um, person that they can call in. The FBI can call in that can help them with difficult cases that they can no longer solve or they have trouble solving. Um, Gray um, William or Graham, as he's sometimes referred to in the book. He's a family man and he um, is um, living with his wife and his small boy and he um, is, um, it, you know, it's implied that he's retired, that he's enjoying life away from the FBI and being a detective and one day he gets a call from one of his, um, probably a boss or one of his friends called Jack Crawford who um, tells Graham that there is a serial killer called the Tooth Fairy who the, because the FBI has actually called the that person, the the, like, the like, two fairy, and the and, and this guy is going around people's houses and um, killing families while they're sleeping in their beds, and cutting out their eyes and um, putting shards of mirrors that he's smashed in the house. He's putting the shards of broken mirrors into the in, into these people's eyes, and he's propping the woman on the bed and having all the members of the family sitting up and watching the woman on the bed. And they have no idea why he's doing this. They don't know his motives, and um, it's a bit confusing, as you know, as well. Um, I wasn't really—I um, mean, throughout the um, the um, book, I wasn't completely. Um, I, I mean, I never really found out why the killer did what he did, or his motivations, uh, um, apart uh, apart from the fact that he's messed up and he's insane. So uh, we um, find out that. Um, so Graham decides to actually, to actually take the case and he goes through all the evidence and all the things that um, the FBI has um, like put together for the Tooth Fairy case so far. And he's trying to figure out why this person is doing what he is doing. But eventually um, Graham hits a brick wall and he needs some help and um, he uh, very reluctantly goes to see a, um, one of his old acquaintances. I wouldn't say a friend, he's more of an, a past associate, and this person's called Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter, or Hannibal Lecter. Because um, Graham was responsible for apprehending Lecter, and because um, he was attacked by Lecter, Lecter tried to stab him with a knife, and he found out who he was. You know, at the time, it was, um, I think he was more of a. Um, a uh, killer that was that was trying to get away or um, or um, evading the police or the FBI. So um, Lecter was apprehended and he was put into the mental asylum or a mental asylum, and this is the same one where we see him in the Silence of the Lambs. And um, so um, Graham isn't at all happy that he has to go and ask Lecter for help because um, and uh, Lecter isn't happy at all for Graham to actually come and see him but he does it in a nice way. If you don't know the character of Lecter, Han 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 Hannibal Lecter is a, a very um, smart, articulate, well-dressed, well-educated, um, he's a uh, well, um, he's a uh, well known, I mean he's actually um, well educated in food and in cultures and in languages and he's a, a very well spoken man and uh, by looking at him you wouldn't know that he actually eats people or is a famous um, serial killer that actually eats his victims in brutal ways but um, yeah he, um, he um, was or is or was or is a um, psychologist he can read you and talk to you and get down underneath your skin and probably drive you insane by, while actually doing so so uh, reluctantly um, Lecter decides to um, help Graham with his case and find out who the Tooth Fairy is. And we find out that um, I think that Lecter does this because he doesn't want he wants to appear to be smarter than the Tooth Fairy, and it's kind of the a thrill for him to actually do this. It's like the chase and like I'm going to catch you or, and find out how about who this person is. It's more of an intellectual thing towards Lecter, I think. So uh, we um, find out that. Um, the, about more of the um, Tooth Fairy, about who this person is, is a person called Francis Delahide. Francis is obsessed with a painting by William Blake, 
which I said at the start of this video. That is called the Red Dragon. I mean, and, sorry, which is called the Great Red Dragon and the Woman Clothed in Sun. He's obsessed with this painting and this figure. He um. He has kind of a um, double personality, or a um, where he has a good side, which is Francis, and a bad side, which is the dragon itself. And think, 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 think about Gollum. And um, Francis has a um, in um, um, struggles with himself about what to do and what not to do. And the um, dragon's kind of saying about how weak Francis is and how he should um, worship him. You know, worship the dragon. And um, continue doing what he's doing. So um, we um, find out more about Francis when he was a small boy. We found out that um, he was a um, wasn't the most attractive person on the planet, and he had a terrible speech impediment. He was bullied a lot in school and in society as a whole, and his family members didn't treat him any differently or any better. We uh, find out how he um, got his jaw fixed as well, and how he, because he, because um, the way he talks now is more articulate and better. More, he actually talks a bit like Lecter in your in the way, and he even has a, um, he even um, admires Lecter. He writes Lecter numerous uh, fan letters throughout this book, saying how much he um, um, is a fan of Lecter and his work, and how he loves Lecter. Um, and um, yeah, and um, Let and uh, the two fairy or Francis um, talk together, or they send each other messages. And um, yeah, um, we and um, we um, sorry, <laughs> just trying to figure out what what else to say, guys. It's about Graham trying to figure out who the two fairy is and trying to catch him. We find out that um, Francis gets into a relationship with a um, blind woman where he works in the same place where he works. This woman's called Reba McClan. Reba is a very innocent and sweet person. She, uh, as I said, she's blind so she can't see any or anything. She takes Reba back to his house where he lives, where his family house, where he lived with his family and his grandmother. And um, they kind of have a nice relationship Francis never um, wants to hurt or kill Reba. He's taken her back to his house to have some company because he feels a kind of a kinship towards her. And it's never a case of her of him taking Reba back to his house to murder her. That never occurs to Francis. To Francis, even though the dragon in his mind keeps on saying to him to, to actually kill Re Reba, he never does it. He wants to try to protect her and he I think he loves her to a certain extent as a boyfriend and girlfriend or a two people who actually love each other. And it's very really sweet. And um ultimately when the um dragon asks for him to kill Reba to um kind of a sacrifice for him, he um has to make a decision whether he wants to whether to let her escape or whether to satisfy his inner demons and his inner dragon and um kill Reba. He also uh, finds the painting, an actual real life painting of this, um, of the Red Dragon um, and it's not a print or anything, it is the original artwork and he um, admires it to an extreme level, he even eats the painting physically, he like tears it up and like puts it in his mouth and chews on it and swallows it he eats the whole thing and in doing so he wants to become closer to the dragon and and to accelerate his becoming so uh, the um, book so that's pretty that's actually pretty much it guys it's about the um, you know it's about Graham trying to apprehend um, Francis or the dragon which he which Francis um, doesn't like the name for the that he's been given he doesn't like the tooth fairy and he refers to himself as either the dragon or the red dragon so uh, we um, also, if you want, so, um, also if you're going into this book thinking that it's going to be a lot of, that there's going to be a lot of scenes with Hannibal Lecter, there isn't, guys. Lecter only has about two or three scenes where he is um, in the book. I think it's about two scenes where he's in the book. 
but he is referred to and mentioned a handful of times throughout the book as well so don't go into this book thinking that it's going to all be about Lecter this book is mostly focusing around Will and Graham and Francis Delahide aka the Red Dragon and Graham trying to apprehend this person and stop him from committing these from actually committing these murders also Graham if you've actually um, read um, Sons of the Lambs or if you watch the movie uh, Graham is more um, I wouldn't say competent or um, smarter than um, than um, Chloe Starling but he's more um, experienced than Clarice is he has got more experience in the field as being a de uh, as actually being a detective and unlike Clarice Graham has a family to actually care of and um, to, to actually take care of and to try to keep away from Francis and to try to stop and to try to prevent him from actually causing his family harm so in a um, nutshell um, that is the story of Red Dragon by Thomas Harris so now I come to my likes and dislikes for this video first the likes I like how um, this um, obviously this book is written I like I liked jumping back into this um, like I wouldn't say worlds but um, being in the company of Lecter again and then scenes with Hannibal Lecter are so beautiful and engaging and interesting and I love them sections so much they were probably my favorite parts in the book and I like the um, the um, parts with Francis and his inner struggles with right and wrong and what he should do and whether he should um, succumb to his dark side or because um, he does have inner struggles and that was really interesting to me now what I disliked about the book I am um, this uh, book does drag a lot for me this it actually does drag a lot for me and um, the and as I said it doesn't have uh, Han Han Hannibal Lecter is hardly in this book he's ha is actually in this book less than he is in Sons of the Lambs so it's not much of a um, presence it's more of a um, figure that, that actually is in the background you know like a side side character if that makes sense so the um, book does drag a lot um, I never I never really found out why Francis was doing what he was doing uh, um, apart from being obsessed with this painting of the Red Dragon and um, I, um, yeah, I mean, all the other characters are actually fine. I mean, Jack Crawford and uh, William Graham are fine. Um, but um, apart from the book dragging a lot, uh, I can't really say much about this as well. Um, I liked this book um, slightly less for that reason than Science of the Lambs. But I did enjoy this book immensely. It was extremely fun to actually read. So, closing thoughts. If you are interested in Thomas Harris's work or reading about the Lecter books uh, and you want to read them in order or publication, then by all means read this book. But I personally would start off with where I started off at and that is with Science of the Lambs. If you read Science of the Lambs, it's not going to spoil anything for you. If you read that book and then go into Red Dragon it's not going to spoil any characters or any plots or anything like that and um, so that's so that's why so that's my recommendation if you aren't fussed what book you actually read in the Lecter series then start off with Science of the Lambs and then maybe go on to this one and then Hannibal then Hannibal Rising which I'm going to be doing soon or as soon as I can but um if you want to read them in publication order then read this one it, it's actually not a bad book by any stretch of the imagination it is really really good Thomas Harris done a magnificent job with this book his um, writing style is really cool and engaging it does keep you entertained throughout the book and um, it hasn't put me off reading the other lecture books as well it's like, really good and I think that if I read this book for a second time then I might enjoy it a bit more on a reread than I did the first time I read it. Yeah, um, that's my own personal opinions. Um, but I would, um, you know, I mean, give, I mean, give this book a chance. It'll give you a sense if you like Thomas's writing style or not. If you liked this whole world that this is in, and it, plus it will give you a sense of Lecter and 
his character and the way he thinks and the way he talks and all that type of stuff. So um, long and short of it, if you're not bothered about what book you want to read in the lecture series, start with Science of the, start, start with Science of the Lambs. But if you want to read them in publication order, um, then, um, then uh, by all means read Red Dragon. So the rating I'm going to give Red Dragon is going to be a 4 stars out of 5. It was um, slightly, um, I mean, the grade slightly below what I gave Science of, the, Science of the Lambs. I think I give Science of the Lambs like a five stars. But I'm going to give Red Dragon currently a four stars out of five. So that's it, guys. That is my review on Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a massive like. If you, um, and comment down below if you have read this book. Um, if you have enjoyed it or if you haven't enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below. If we do talk about this book, as I always say in all my review videos, if we do discuss it in the comments, please make sure that it's spoiler free, like any plots or any characters. Make sure that it's spoiler free, but I would love to have a conversation with this book with, 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 with you guys. Also, if you know why um, Francis um, done all the things that he did as the Red Dragon, Please let me know in the comments down below. I am really curious to actually find out what happened in his life. Um, and if you have enjoyed this video as a whole, um, please consider subscribing to my channel. It always helps the channel grow. If you do subscribe, please click on the little bell notification just so you know whenever I upload videos. I upload videos every Monday and Friday. And um, yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do, guys. And with all that said, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading, and I will see you all in my next video.